All right, so what I want to show you guys how to graph is f of x equals negative 1 half sine of x divided by 2. So when looking at a problem like this, the main, the main important thing that I want to do is not to try to overcomplicate this, but let's just try to find everything that we know that we need to be able to figure out for this. So we have the problem. The main important thing is there's a couple important points that we want to figure out. The first one is going to be amplitude. And remember, amplitude was the absolute value of your a. Well, a is going to be your num is going to be in front of your function that's multiplying by. So therefore, I'm going to have negative one half absolute value, which is equal to one half. Now remember, amplitude is your half distance from your max to your min. Um, so that distance, the half distance, is going to be one half. Then the next thing I always like to do is find my period. And remember to find the period of a function. That is 2 pi divided by b. Well, remember, b is going to be your coefficient of x. So we look at what is the number in front of x, and we could say, well, we could say there's a coefficient of 1, but that 1 is being divided by 2. So therefore, your b is 2 pi divided by 1 half. And then this one always trips, trips up people again if they kind of forgot this from our trick. Remember, when dividing by a fraction, to get rid of it, multiply by the reciprocal, because any number by its reciprocal multiplies equal 1, and then 2 pi times 2 over 1 equals 4 pi. 4 pi over 1 equals 4 pi. So therefore, my period now is going to be 4 pi. Um, the next thing that I want to look at is I want to look at my critical points. If you guys remember, when we were graphing, uh, I talked about critical points of a graph. We had a max. We had a min. We had, we had all these x-intercepts, right? We talked about four critical points. Well, to determine the critical points, or at least the distance between the critical points, what we're going to do is you're going to take your period. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to take your period and divide it by 4. So I'm just going to do 4 pi divided by 4. So what that tells me now is the distance between my critical points, right? The first one is being my x-intercept. And then I have a max. And then I have an x-intercept. Then I have a min. The distance between each critical point is going to be pi. And the last thing I'm going to want to do is determine the start and the end of one period. Because what we're going to do is I'm going to graph one initial period. And if you remember, when we, were, when we graphed kind of the parent function of sine and cosine, we graphed one period. And that started at 0 and ended at 2 pi. If there's any type of transformation our, our, or how much that period is going to change, I want to know about that because I'm going to initially rewrite that first period. So what we do is we take whatever is inside your function, your bx minus c, if you guys remember. So we took your start, if you remember, was bx minus c equals 0. Well, in this case, all we have is x divided by 2 equals 0. So for solving for x, we have x equals 0. And then we said the end, if you remember, was, again, inside your function, bx minus c equals 2 pi. So therefore, what we have is x divided by 2 equals 2 pi. Therefore, the end of my first period is going to be 4 pi. All right, so let's take a look at what this would look like. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph, in this example, I'm going to graph the parent function as well so you guys can kind of see what's going to happen. All right, so let's just go. So we're going to have even points all these spaces are evenly spaced out right so we look at our start and our end actually what i'm going to do is we're talking about the sign which there's actually one more point i want to make mention to you is also remember that this is a negative right it's ne being multiplied by negative so therefore i know that there's going to be a reflection I almost always forget this, reflection of the x-axis. All right. Now, before I even get to this, I just want to go back through the parent graph real quick so you guys can see how these transformations are affecting it. So we're talking about the sine graph. If you guys remember, the parent graph or the first period of a sine graph, the graph went up to 1 and went down to negative 1. It started at 0, 0, and the first critical point was pi halves, then pi then 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi, right? So if you remember what that graph looked like, what we did was the parent graph of sine went up to 
pi halves to get its first critical point, then it crossed back at pi, which is the x-intercept, went down to negative 1, and then went back up. So that is f of x equals sine of x. Right? That's what that graph looks like. However, let's look at everything that we're changing now. Rather than it taking for to go from um, 0 to pi to complete one cycle, now we're going to say it's going to go from 0 to 4 pi to complete a cycle. That means that distance is now being extended from 2 pi to 4 pi. The next thing is we have a reflection of the x-axis. This whole graph is going to be reflected over the x-axis. And also my amplitude, that half distance, so the half distance, instead of going up to 1, is now only going to go up to 1 half and down to 1 half. So to graph a reflection, here's what I like to do. We look at our critical points. We now know that the critical points, ladies and gentlemen, are not, remember the critical points? The distance between the critical points are not pi halves like it was for the parent graph. Now the critical points are pi. So that's the distance between every critical point, right? I'm either going to have a minimum, a maximum, or an x-intercept at every critical point. So the graph, I'm not sh I actually didn't shift the graph. The graph still starts at 0, so I'm going to have an x-intercept here. However, my first critical point is now reflected over the x-axis, so it's going to go down to negative 1. Then the next critical point is going to be an x-axis. Then it's going to go up to 1 half and then down back to 4. And you guys can see now this graph has completed one cycle with a distance of 4 pi. And then what I'll do is I'll also just increase this going in the negative direction. So therefore, this is negative pi, negative 2 pi, negative 3 pi, negative 4 pi. And there you go. There's how I've now graphed the function with two complete periods. And it looks a little rough on that side over there, but do you guys can see it? Any questions on what I did? Nothing? 